It is Saturday the 11th of August. This is Travel Jackson episode 19, part 2. Our final part. Roll the titles. My name is Jack Neil, and in this program I take you on a journey. Welcome to Travel Jack's Journeys. Good morning everyone, welcome to episode 19, part 2, our final part. For this journey we are going to Verseville, I mean Shrewsbury, for the final day of the Shrewsbury Flower Show buses. We did it in the previous part, in this part we are going to be catching the train. Today's train plan, we're waiting for the 11.59, Arriva train as well serves the Hollyhead to take us far as Shrewsbury. Going at Wellington and Shrewsbury. <coughs> then the return train plan, we're going to be catching the 1933 Arriva train as well, so it's through Birmingham International, takes far as Telford Central. Calling at Wellington and Telford Central. Basically, we're doing exactly what we did in the last part, watching the Bendy buses. And we're using this ticket, which on the route it says via Arriva train as well as only, which means we are catching Arriva train as well as only. Because the normal ticket would be £4.10, but they do a special ticket which is only valid on Arriva Trains Wales, and that's only £3.85 from whoever rail card 
return from Telford to Shrewsbury as we might go for a little ride on one of the buses because I believe there is a a tour of Shrewsbury a regional transport running tours of Shrewsbury this evening so we're going to be jumping in one of their buses to have a tour of Shrewsbury I will see you down on the platform at Telford Central I'm just on Link Bridge actually and I'll film the train arriving into Telford Central I don't know what's on it actually and we'll hopefully see the Wendy buses again before I, before I film the train coming in this is the new bridge and now they've put some steps in I'm filming this on the current bridge which this will be demolished over the next few months so I'll go on that platform and film our train arriving into Tap Central and here comes my train, this is 11.59 and we have a train to our service to Hollyhead, it's 829 
Now 12.35, we're here at Shrewsbury, just jumped up on for 8.29. Absolutely ram-packed the train was, only two coaches. Don't mind. So we're now at Shrewsbury, we're going to go and spot the Bentley buses. Here comes one of the Bendys. Here comes another bendy. So I am currently walking over the Welsh Bridge. That's the River Seven.
That's going for 11. Yeah. Allow that. Two drivers on this one coming along. Yeah. All I'm seeing today is bloody versus. <laughs> I'm currently on Frankvale Bridge doing some bus spotting and all I've seen is bloody versus. It's all we've seen is bloody versus. I'm surprised there isn't one here. Versa. Yeah. So low. What was the solo, the solo we owe? 6607? Uh, yeah. Here comes another Versa. Uh -oh. I was hoping you'd have gone up Start of 1547, still in Versaville, and then Shrewsbury. Um, that's it from the buses, so I'm going to do a bit of filming around the town. We're going to go and jump on the Route Master. Here comes a few of the buses. This is one of the Bendies. There goes one of the Talbot buses, operating the 19, 33 to 10. Got a couple of verses passing through. It's now 1727, now still in Versaville. And now I hand down to a bus stop and catch a route master which is doing a tour of Versaville and it's Shrewsbury. On BBC radio and television, including the famous long running British children's television programme Blue Peter. Every year, the Quarry Park holds an annual flower show festival in the late summer. This is the longest running horticultural show in the world with the first event being held back in 1875. We're now on the regional transport choose for your sightseeing tour. We'll have a tour on this route master of Shrewsbury. feature of Shrewsbury is the number of the original black and white timber frames, medieval and Tudor buildings. These are notable due to their distinctive look and overhanging floor levels. Many of these buildings have been lost in other towns and cities due to damage from fire or demolition between the 1940s to the 1960s to make way for newer developments. Shrewsbury County has over 600 of these iconic buildings listed with preservation orders.
As we navigate around Franklin Island, the road leading right to the right of the bus shelter towards Welshpool is known as the Mount. Further up the Mount, just out of sight to the right, is the house of Charles Darwin, born in 1809. His father, Robert Darwin, was a doctor in Shrewsbury, and his mother, Susanna, was one of the Wedgwood Pottery dynasty. In later life, Darwin rejected a career in medicine before accepting a post on the ship HMS Beagle as their naturalist. It was during his observations on the voyage that he believed that species had evolved from one another. When he returned back to England in 1836, he spent many years collecting further evidence before he published his book in 1859, The Origins of Species. The book caused an uproar in Victorian society, where he was denounced by the religious establishment and even the scientific community split. While Starling wasn't the first to write about evolution, he was the first to present detailed evidence to suggest the process of natural selection. The book went on to change people's views of the natural world. Charles Darwin died in 1882 and is buried in the Westminster Abbey, London. On the left, adjacent to the River Severn, is a piece of modern art designed to look like a vertebrate or the helix of a DNA strand. The work was erected in 2009 to celebrate the bicentenary of the birth of Charles Darwin, officially called Quantum Leap. The sculpture has the local nickname of Slinky. side of the river is just behind the castle. This made for a good defensive point which at the time was the only entrance into Shrewsbury as the whole town was enclosed by the river. Shrewsbury was constantly under attack by the Welsh trying to capture the town. The most notorious being King Llewellyn II who after many years and battles was killed in 1282. His brother David was also defeated a year later and brought to Shrewsbury to be hung. Adjacent to the castle is Shrewsbury Railway Station, which was built in 1848 for the Birmingham, Shrewsbury and Chester Railways, originally as a two-storey building. The station's forecourt used to slope upwards until in the beginning of the 1900s when it was lowered to the present course and the station building extended downwards. Shrewsbury Railway Station has the distinction of having the largest mechanical working signal box in the world, which is still hand operated 24-7 by railway engineers based in the box, an operational practice that even in the 21st century has not changed since the days of steam trains. of Charles Darwin sitting in his armchair. The building was originally the home of the Shrewsbury School where Darwin attended. In more modern times it now houses the town's public library.
Saint Mary's Church, which dates from Saxon times and is said to have the third largest spire in England. In 1739, Sherman Robert Campbell attempted to slide down the spire head first using a rope and grooved wooden sledge. Robert was not blessed with success. His engraved obligatory stands outside the west door of the church. Shrewsbury has many passageways dating from medieval times, leading from one street to another. In Shropshire, these passageways are known as shuts, of which many of them are named after the services they provided. As we pass over the English Bridge, in front of the railway bridge to the left used to be the home of Shrewsbury Town Football Club's ground, the Gay Meadow. Flats are now built on the former site. The name Gay Meadow comes from the land's former use as a fur ground. The club was formed in 1886 and before moving to the site was based around the Sutton Lane and Cotform suburbs of the town. Being close to the town centre was ideal for local supporters and players alike. However, there was a curse. Being so close to the River Severn, the stadium was prone to flooding, with numerous games being called off due to a waterlogged pitch. After 97 years of Game Meadow, the club finally moved to its new grounds, the Greenhouse Meadow, in the New Brace district of Shrewsbury in 2007. On your right is the former site of Abbey Forgate Railway Station, the remains of which, including the station building and platform, can be seen on the far left of the car park. The line has had an unfortunate history, opening and closing on numerous occasions. Originally known as the Potteries, the Shrewsbury and North Wales Railway never actually reached its full potential and only ran between Shrewsbury and Lathamonic when it opened in August 1866. The line reopened in December 1868. However, financial problems occurred once again, resulting in a receiver being appointed in 1877, and total closure of the line came three years later. Following local pressure, a new company called Shropshire and Montgomeryshire Light Railway Company Limited was formed. One of its lead directors was Colonel Stevens, who took over the responsibility for the line, as well as many other light railway systems around the United Kingdom. The line between Shrewsbury and Lanarmark was reopened in April 1911, with a ceremony being conducted by the mayor on the roof of a train at Abbey Station. From September 1939, the railway came under the control of the railway executive and was requisitioned by the War Department to aid the war effort. The War Department stopped running the line in 1960. Ahead is Lord Hill's column. Lord Roland Hill was born in 1772 in nearby Priest Hall, one of 16 children. Roland Hill attended a military academy in Strasbourg at the age of 18, as he felt he did not make the cutting law despite his father's thoughts. He distinguished himself in the war against Napoleon Bonaparte's occupation of Spain in 1808. This was where Generals Lord Hill and the Duke of Wellington started working together. As a general, Lord Hill did what he could for his men during the campaign, earning the nickname Daddy Hill because of his kindness. He then fought at the Battle of Waterloo on June 18, 1815, being second in command to the Duke of Wellington. During the battle, Lord Hill had his horse shot from under him, but still managed to lead his army to victory, defeating Napoleon. The column was erected here between 1814 and 1860 to celebrate his actions in the various battles as a national hero. Lord Hill was the commander-in-chief of the British Army from 1828 till he passed away in 1842 and is buried in nearby Hamlet. Lord Hill's statue stands on the tallest Doric column in the world, standing at 133 foot and 6 inches tall.
Shrewsbury Abbey was founded in 1083. It was the priest of St. Peter who, after returning from a pilgrimage to Rome, persuaded Roger de Montgomery, who later became the Earl of Shrewsbury, to raise the profile of the church to an abbey, when Roger brought two monks over from Normandy to direct the building of the church. Although the abbey flourished in the 12th century, the monks felt that their monastery was incomplete without a saint's shrine to attract pilgrims and their wealth. The monks looked around Shropshire and the borderlands for a suitable candidate. After looking deeper into Wales, they found a saint who was dedicated and pure. An expedition in 1138 was led into Snowdonia, where the bones of St. Winifred were brought back to the abbey and enshrined with great ceremony. Her Holiness made the Abbey a major pilgrimage centre. In 1283, King Edward I assembled his Parliament at the Abbey. From this assembly originates the United Kingdom's modern House of Commons in London. As with many English abbeys and churches, life at Shrewsbury Abbey was brought to an end by King Henry VIII's dissolution of the monasteries in 1540. Whilst the Abbey fell into disrepair, it did survive as a parish church. In the early 1800s, the great engineer, Thomas Talford, demolished part of the Abbey in order to construct a new road linking Wales with London. It is part of this road we are currently travelling on. In 1977, Shrewsbury Abbey was the basis of Ellis Peter's first book, featuring the character Brother Cadfire. A further 20 books and TV drama series based on the Abbey later followed. The Hotel the hotel was one of the principal coaching hotels in the country before the railways arrived at Shrewsbury in the 19th century, putting most of the main stagecoach routes out of business. One infamous stagecoach rider was Samuel Haywood, who, because of his celebrity, would draw a crowd when they knew he was coming. Haywood would come up the hill at great speed with his carriage and turn full circle at the top into the entrance without slowing down. His wheels had been only inches to spare and never ever hitting the sides of the buildings or mountain walkways. Over the years, many other riders haven't managed this and ended up wearing down the sides of the entrance arch of the hotel, damage which can still be seen today.
standing in front of the old market hall, is the monument dedicated to Robert Clive, better known as Clive of India. Born near Market Drayton, North Shropshire, in 1725, he was the son of a lawyer. Clive was a difficult child and had a reputation as the head of a gang that taunted teachers at school. At the age of 19, he set sail from the Madras, working for the East India Company. Shortly after arriving there, he enlisted in the army and gained a reputation as a skilled soldier, and he was quickly promoted through the ranks. In 1760, Clive returned to Britain and became interested in politics. He became the Member of Parliament for Shrewsbury. However, in 1774, Clive was accused of fraud, having acquired a personal wealth to the dishonour and detriment of the state. A year later, on the 22nd of November 1775, Clive was believed to have committed suicide, although the actual cause of death still remains a mystery. One to have a ride on that route, master. And I thought I can't do the route. So I catch the bus back to town. And I thought I'll catch the train. Stop what do you call? <laughs> so I've just jumped off that bend with us. Right, we're back at Shrewsbury train station. I've just had a quick ride on the bend with us. Thank you, Ariva, for organising that. I asked one of the inspectors, I went, so I'm going down to the train station to run everyone on the bend. They said, yeah, and they went, I'll ask a driver for you, see if you can bring you down to the train station. And they did. That was quite nice. And so thank you, Ariva, for that. <clears throat> I'm back at Shrewsbury. 
train station. I'm now going to catch the 1933 Arriva train to our service to Birmingham Tash, to take to Top Central, from that Wellington and Top Central. Back here for 1953. Thank you, thank you to the driver that bending bus for giving me a lift. I knew it was going to happen anyway, so he's a nice driver. One thing I like about Shrewsbury Station, semaphore signals are still in use. There's the biggest signal box, which it, you heard a bit of information on the tour. We're currently waiting for our train to come in. And the platforms are over the River Seven. That's why you can see this bridge. The River Seven runs under it. That goes over to both shoots through. Shrewsbury been Lion Bridge. Thank you for regional transport for doing the tour. I enjoyed that tour. It's a bit raining but it's alright. Here comes my train, this is the 1933 Arriva Trains Bar Service to Birmingham and Tash of only 158827. God will be removed from the train. Thank you. Hello, ladies. Sure, you should be.
Probably ready for the first one. It's 2011 and back at Telford Central. I've got back here <clears throat> 18 minutes late, which means I've missed the floor to Telford Town Centre. But I'm going to walk it. If I get the next floor, I could risk missing the number three back to my place. I might do a little bit of filming on it, I might not. If not, You'll see me and in the program in the next thing. If not, I'll see you on the bus.
it's 2052. I'm back at my place ish, about two minute walk away. Just gone past the local bus stop. Time to end episode 19 of Travel Tips Journeys. For the last two parts, we went to the Shrewsbury Flower Show. The part one you saw is jump on the 19. So I've got a bit of a sore throat at the moment. <clears throat> Hopefully, when the next one comes out, I won't have a sore throat. Where did it work? Oh, yeah. Jumped on 3751 on the free to Tavern Town Centre. And um, we jumped on 3311 on the 19. Got that to Shrewsbury. Did some bus spotting, saw the, the Bentley buses, and a few other buses. And then we came back on the 19, which was operated out of Shrewsbury Depot. That was Versa 2995. <coughs> Not bad Versa. In part two, what you've just watched. <coughs> I might have filmed on 3753 as well, but I can't remember if I did or not. Oh, in part two, we got the train. We started on a double decker, 4803 on the free. Took that one up to Tuff Town Centre. And then we jumped on a jam-packed 158829, took that one to Shrewsbury. It was quite busy because of the Shrewsbury Flower Show. When we got to Shrewsbury, we went some, did some bus spotting, so I showed you some interesting views of Shrewsbury. And then we jumped on the OU Routemaster, which regional transport were doing tours of Shrewsbury. Of the Flower Show, so we went for a tour. It only cost me £5. <coughs> if you're ever in the area and the tours are running, have, please go and have a ride on the Route Master, it's absolutely fantastic. The seats are really comfortable. <coughs> and then a rig up the organised the ride for me on one of the Bendy buses up to the railway station, which saved me walking as he was actually chucking it down while my mates was driving. <coughs> And then we jumped on 158827 back to Telford Central. Lovely train. That's why it's a member of my favourite three. <coughs> Fortunately, I got to town a bit late. That's alright. So I walked it to the Telford Town Centre. Then you've just seen me jump off 8311 on the free. So 8311 has shown up twice in this episode. That's it for me. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you to Button Fusers for coming to choose the voucher. I'll be up for doing it next year. Since I'll do it this year, every year. And thank you to the Reaver drivers for letting me get some good photos of them. <coughs> and so if you want to see all of the journey on 3311 from Travel Town Centre to Market Place, it'll be in Travel Truck Exchange on the buses. <coughs> Coming up in December. All we're seeing today at Shrewsbury Flower Show buses is Versa, Versa, Versa. Occasionally the old Benley bus. Right, that's it from me. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Details are coming up next. Don't forget you can subscribe to Shrewsbury Flower Journeys. Click on the subscribe button below. Or if you're watching on a telly, I don't know where it is. If you want notifications, click the little bell below. But I don't know where that is. If you have got any questions for the travel journeys, put them in the comments below or put them on our Facebook page or even at my Twitter account those details are coming next